Hey guys, so today I am going to be talking about my top 10 books of 2020. But I had actually planned on doing this video a lot earlier. I had my list ready to go and then I got COVID, which was just a perfect way to end 2020. I am so quarantining in my room. Technically, my 10 days that they recommend are up, but I still have a little bit of a cough and I'm kind of a little hoarse, so... If my voice sounds really deep, I think that's why. It sounds a little weird. Anyway, I have my books right here and I am very excited to get started. Before I get into my top 10, I did have some honorable mentions that I read this year. I read a lot of really good books this year. A lot of ones that I really loved that I would still consider favorites aren't on this list. One of those being The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I really really loved this book. I thought it was so sweet. I loved Josh who is the male in this story. I highly recommend it still. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I enjoyed it. Would highly recommend. Finally, The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I listened to this on audio and I am not a huge audiobook reader. I find it harder to focus and I have to concentrate a lot more than if I just have the page in front of me. I think that's because I get really really distracted easily so I'll find myself zoning out of books but The Night Swim was not like that. I really really enjoyed the story, how it was told. It has a podcast element which was so cool to listen to. I would highly recommend that one. Okay, so now that I've rambled about books that are not on my list, we can get into my top 10. Number 10 on my list is The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. This follows Gavin Scott and he is a professional baseball player and he is having some marital problems with his wife and he really wants to fix them and his friends go to him and give him this romance novel. He is supposed to do what the guy in the book is doing in order to try to get his wife back. I just thought that this book was so fun and so good. I absolutely fell in love with these characters. I felt so connected to them and even though I am not married and I'm not going through a divorce or having marital problems, I just really cared for them a lot and I just really loved them. I also really loved that this book had stuttering representation. I've mentioned before that I am a speech pathologist and so I love seeing speech and language disorders shown in books. The author really showcased how Gavin's stutter affects him and how other people treat him because of it. I just really loved how it was done in the book. She did such a good job of showing how important it was to him and how much it impacted him without it taking away from the story. That was something I just absolutely loved. I know that that's not something that tons of people might gravitate towards but that was something that was just so important. Next on my list is All the Bright Places by Jessica Niven. The story is told in multiple perspectives. We read from the point of view of Theodore Finch who is a high schooler. He doesn't really fit in. Um, he deals with some mental health issues and other kids really don't understand that. We also read from the point of view of Violet Markey who is a more popular high schooler and she was involved in an accident with her sister and her sister ended up passing away and Violet did not. And so she is dealing with the grief of that. And these two very different high schoolers end up meeting and becoming partners on this school project and bonding through that. This book deals with some pretty heavy topics. Like I had mentioned, Theodore has bipolar disorder and so he struggles a lot with that. I think that the multiple point of views is really interesting to see what he was kind of going through in his point of view and then seeing it as an outsider from Violet's point of view. I would definitely recommend this book but I would highly suggest looking up any trigger warnings to it because it is pretty heavy. It is also a movie on Netflix. I know 
that I was really confused when I saw the trailer to the movie because it's kind of targeted more as a like romance cutesy coming of age story and it's really not. I did enjoy the movie. I think that they did a good job but if you've seen the trailer and are just kind of kind of go into the book blind like I did, I would definitely recommend looking up more about it because it's definitely heavier than I think that it was kind of marketed to be. Number eight is a book that I actually have and that is Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This book surprised me so much by how much I really really enjoyed it. So this is a middle grade. It follows Morgan Crow and she is born on Eventide which is considered the unluckiest day that you can be born. Any kid born on Eventide is considered a cursed child and basically that means that anything that goes wrong in this town is blamed on Morgan. So car troubles, anything, it is all Morgan's fault. It also means that on her 11th birthday she will die on eventide and so the night before her 11th birthday she is whisked away by this man named Jupiter North and he takes her to Nevermore. I don't want to give too much away about this book so I will just kind of stop there but this book is so fun and whimsical. I had such a good time reading it. I'm always really hesitant to go into middle grades because I know that I'm not their target audience um, as a 25 year old woman but I really really enjoyed this. I decided to pick it up because I had heard so many comparisons to Harry Potter. I laughed out loud at some parts like it's actually really entertaining even for someone my age and so if you are someone who's kind of hesitant about middle grade or looking to read something that's not too childish I would definitely recommend this because even though Morgan is 11 in the book I definitely think that anyone could read this. It's also a series and I only read this one in 2020. I do have the sequel on my TBR shelf over there. You can't see it but it's over there um so I'm hoping to get to it this year but yeah I definitely be interested in continuing the series. Number seven is Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. I feel so late to the game with this one. It's not even funny. I've mentioned before I'm trying to read all of Cassandra Clare's books and so this was my personal favorite one that I read this year. This one I can't say too much about it because it is a sequel in the Infernal Devices series. We do follow Shadowhunters, it's still in the Shadowhunter world and it follows ancestors of characters that we read about in the moral instruments and so that was super fun i loved seeing the last names of people that were the same and everything it's just it's such a good time this book has the infamous will Harrendale, and i think that he is probably my favorite part of this book i think he is such a good character he's very witty sarcastic funny but he also has a lot of depth to him and we find out a lot more about him in this book which I think is why I like it so much. I cried in this book and I don't know why like I just feel like I felt so attached to the characters in this that whenever they felt any sadness I felt it with them. <laughs> I'm hoping to get to Clockwork Princess this year. I've heard that that is kind of the favorite and it will make everyone cry and I cried in this one and I didn't really hear anybody saying that they did so I'm sure that Clockwork Princess will destroy me. I've honestly kind of been putting it off for that reason but I'm definitely going to get to it this year and I'm excited. Next is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I know you have heard of this one. Kat has shouted praise for this book from the rooftops and I'm so glad I gave into the hype. This follows a high schooler named Frances 
and she is very driven and motivated. She really cares about school and wanting to do good and getting into her dream college. She also really loves a podcast called Universe City and she ends up bonding with Alid, I think is how you say his name, I hope. Um, she ends up bonding with him and they become friends bonding over Universe City and not really a spoiler but he is the creator of the podcast. This book is really hard to explain for me because it's not necessarily what happens in the book that is why I just loved it so much but I think it has so many important themes and things that are brought up in the book that I don't see too many books exploring necessarily. Francis is applying to colleges and Aled is getting ready to go off to college and those are such important times for people and even though I was not in either of those stages when I read this book, I still related a lot to it. I graduated grad school this year and I was in a program that was pretty competitive and so I was really really hard on myself when I would do bad on things with so many smart people and I definitely related to Francis in the sense of just comparing yourself to everybody and being so hard on yourself for making a mistake. Like I said it's so hard to explain it explores friendship, family, school issues, just so many things that I think that this book would be so beneficial for anybody in high school because I think that anybody could relate to some aspect of it. I also related a lot to Aled when he, I don't know, am I saying his name right? I feel like it does not sound right. He has moments where he's kind of struggling with not knowing what he wants to do and not knowing and feeling like what he wants to do isn't valuable, I guess. And when I was an undergrad, I switched my major three times. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. I just felt very lost. And I think that that is a big theme with the people in this book. And it's just amazing. Highly recommend it to anyone of any age. It's so good. Kat is so right. It's amazing. Next up is Be Treed by Emily Henry. I read this this summer and I fell in love with this book. It follows January. She is an author and her father passes away and so she moves to his beach house for the summer. While she's there, she meets Gus who is also an author and they find out that they're both in a bit of a writing slump. So in order to try to get out of that slump, they try writing in the other person's genre. So January, who's normally a romance author, is going to write literary fiction and Gus is going to write romance when he normally writes literary fiction. They start going on these field trips to try to show the other person how they get inspiration for their books and it is just such a good time. I loved this book a lot more than I was expecting because I went into it kind of thinking it was just a little cutesy romance and it would just be a sweet little read but it is just so much more than that. It touches on family, it touches on loss and I just really loved all of that in this book. It's something that I think about and just love more and more. It's just, it's so, so good. I think reading it in the summer just also made it atmospheric. Even though I was not on the beach, I was stuck in the house, but it was just still so sweet, so good. Highly recommend. Number four on my list is Uninvited by Lisa Turkhurst. This is a Christian nonfiction and it touches on feelings of just loneliness and rejection and feeling less than and I randomly decided to pick this up and I am so glad that I did because she touched on so many things that were relevant in my life at the time when I read this. I started my first big girl job in August and I 
like I had mentioned, I'm pretty hard on myself with things like that. And I just kind of feel like I'm doing things wrong or I'm making so many mistakes and like everybody else kind of catches on a little quicker than me and while that's understandable it's a new job I didn't realize that loneliness was really a feeling that I felt with that until I read this because she just touched on so many things that I was relating to at the time. She uses a lot of scripture to prove her points in this book which seems kind of obvious since it's Christian nonfiction but I've actually read a few books where that's not the case and it's just kind of the author telling you how God would want you to feel and how you should feel this way and there's really nothing to back that up. She would bring up these points that were so comforting and so impactful at the time and then she would follow it up with scripture and that to me just made me feel so good and so comforted and it was exactly what I needed to hear. I also really liked that this book wasn't cheesy and over the top trying to be inspiring because that's another thing that I find with a lot of books like this is that the author really wants to inspire the reader and wants to make a big point and while that's great a lot of times if there's not tons they have to say it just ends up getting wordy and cringy and cheesy and I don't think that was I don't think this book was like that at all I listened to it on audio and I ended up buying the physical copy because it is something I would love to reread and kind of highlight and tab. She highlighted some scriptures that she mentions throughout. So if there was a verse that really stood out to you, which there were plenty, um, you can just go back and it has the chapter that it was in and the scripture that was mentioned and I think that that was a really neat touch. This book just, I think it's amazing. I think she put so much care into it. Like, I think that that's what I loved so much is that it just felt so authentic, so personal and I loved it. So if you are looking for a great Christian nonfiction that's not cheesy, just really sends a great message. I'd recommend this one. The number three spot, I kind of wanted to preface this by saying that I had a really hard time deciding where to put this one on my list or whether I should even rank it because it is nonfiction and I feel weird ranking someone else's story but it is a book that had such a big impact on me so I did want to include it in the list. So I just wanted to say just because it is number three doesn't mean that I think that my top two are better. I just think that I had a more enjoyable time reading those two because since this is someone's real true story, it was a lot harder to take myself out of that story later on because it was actually happening. So I don't know if that makes sense, but long story short, my number three is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. If you don't know what this book is about, Chanel Miller was the woman who was raped by Brock Turner at a Stanford party. She basically tells her entire story in this and it is incredibly powerful, upsetting. I don't know that I've ever read a book that has made me feel so angry and so upset and like I said, when I feel those things in a fiction book, it's a lot easier for me to take myself out of it, set it down, enjoy my day and then get back to it. This, I would just kind of sit and think about it constantly <laughs> when I was reading it because it is someone's true story and it actually happened. Chanel Miller is an amazing writer. I know that I could never understand her situation, her exact situation that she went through, but I think she does such an amazing job of making you feel like you are there with her. So even though you are not experiencing the feelings she necessarily was, I felt those things for her. This book is by far the best memoir I've ever read. It was so good, so well written. She is such an amazing powerful woman. Number two on my list is a book that I love more and more each time I think about it and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book follows singer Daisy Jones and band the Six 
and their experience merging together to write the Aurora album. This book was a super uh, unique reading experience because it is told in an interview style. It makes the band feel really real because it is a fictional band, unfortunately. I would love to listen to this album, but <laughs> unfortunately can't do that. I have tried to explain to people what I love about this book so much and I honestly don't know. I, I love the story. I love the characters. I kid you not, I have thought about this book every single day since I read it back in April. I just, I love it. I am just obsessed with everything about it and there will be times where I'm just sitting, going about my day and I'll just think about like one of the scenes in the hotel or one of the scenes at the piano or the photo shoot where they were taking pictures for the album. I just, I love it so, so much. I've always really been interested in bands and kind of behind the scenes of making albums and everything. So I think that's where part of it comes from, but I don't know. This book is just so, so good. Another thing that I think is just oh, amazing is Taylor Jenkins Reid is a freaking genius. <laughs> and she, um, throughout the book, you are going through the writing process with the band and with Daisy Jones. And so you get to hear little, here, you get to read little snippets of songs throughout like certain lyrics. But then at the end, she writes out lyrics to every single song. So once you're done reading this magnificent book, you get to read every single lyric that's in here. And that to me is just amazing. Also this cover. I love the cover. I already want to reread it, like talking about it. Number one on my list, my top 10 books of 2020, is probably not a surprise to anyone who watches my videos or has watched any video since I think I mentioned it pretty much in every one, but that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I was not expecting to love it in the way that I did because it's historical fiction and that has always really intimidated me because I don't know about you, when I hear historical fiction, I think it's boring, it's slow, and that is not how this book was for me at all. This follows two sisters in Nazi-occupied France. Vianne is one sister. She is dealing with her husband going off to war and taking care of her daughter during this time. And then Isabel, who is the other sister, is very strong-willed and wants to fight and wants to get herself involved in ending all of this. And so she is doing her own thing. I think what I loved about this book is that the sisters are so strong, but in different ways. Like they're very, very different and we get to see both of them dealing with different situations in the book. I sobbed in this book and like I don't mean like a little sob like oh a little tear fell out. I was like snot coming out like crying. As you could probably tell from my descriptions of these books I'm a very character driven reader. I cared so much about Vianne and Isabel and like I had mentioned, I didn't find this book boring at all, like I typically think of historical fiction being. I mean, it's a pretty chunky book, but I was never bored. I would find myself being really anxious when certain things were happening or just really worried. And I was never bored while reading this. I really loved every minute of it, even when it was really sad. I just, I cannot recommend this book enough. I think it is just such a beautifully written, amazing, show-stopping 10 out of 10 book. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique. This is a book that if I could give you this book through the screen, I swear I would turn into Oprah and be like, you get the night here, you get the night you get the night <laughs> because I just want everyone to read it. It's so amazing, so good, but I need to stop rambling about it. Just know I loved this book. It's honestly not just a favorite of the year. I think this is like all-time favorite book. I loved it so much. It's just, mm, it's beautiful, amazing. We love her. 
Okay guys, well that was my very rambly, very scattered top 10 books of 2020. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you guys read any of these books or what your favorite book of 2020 was. I'd really like to know and subscribe if you haven't. So thank you guys so much again and I look forward to hopefully making more consistent booktube videos in 2021. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!